Good morning, YouTube. Today, Josh is going to tell us about a crazy story of locating his first car after 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, that is Josh, and we're in my garage, and like I said, we're going to tell you an interesting story about finding his first car, but real quick, if you want to support us, please like, share, and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and of course, go visit normalguysupercar.com, there you go, parts and services for your car. Yeah, we'll just dive right into it, because this is, this is totally unexpected, we did not think this was going to happen, it's crazy and cool. Alright, I'm just going to let Josh tell his story, and I'm going to stand off to the side and interject. Yeah, or you can ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so 2002, I was about 15 years old, and I was working at a friend's batting cage, picking up the balls and putting them, loading them back in the machine. Saving money, I worked at a computer store, I was building computers. At 15? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so I saved enough money to buy my first car, and a Mercedes 190E was the car that I wanted. I don't remember exactly why, I just, that was a car that I just loved. I was like, that's the co coolest car. So I started looking, this is back in the days of infancy of eBay, but I came across one on eBay that was in Chicago. I emailed the seller and we went back and forth for a while and came to an agreement on the price and I bought the car from him. My dad flew to Chicago. I was living in Southern Arizona at the time. He flew to Chicago, met with the seller, paid him and drove the car back all the way to Arizona for me. On the way, he had an interesting story. He got pulled over in Oklahoma and the police thought he was bringing drugs back because he was driving a black Mercedes. Little, you know, and it was a $4,000 car at the time. So it's like, whatever, but they gutted the whole car. They like took the door panels off, took the trunk apart, everything and they didn't find anything. And so they left my dad on the side of the road and was like, you have to put your car back together. So he did, <laughs> he like put it back together the best he could, got home. I took it apart and, you know, put it all back together the way it was supposed to be. But that was my first car and it was awesome. That was the first car I, you know, drove to school in, the first car I went on a date in, all of that stuff. Worked on it with my dad a lot, uh, who's gone now. So it has a lot of sentimental value to me. And then like an idiot teenager, I wanted the next biggest, best thing or whatever, and I sold it, you know, after only having it for a year, a year and a half or whatever. Regretted it ever since, so. How many miles were on it? When I sold it, I think it had like 90,000 miles on it. It was actually pretty low for a 1986 car. Sold it on, moved to Texas, and just life, you know, kept going and going. And finally, I, I was just thinking, I was like, you know, I need to find that car because that would be really cool to have that car again, just for sentimental reasons. So I started looking for it. I had the VIN number. Um, I have the original printout from the eBay ad when I bought it. So I did a Carfax and kind of looked at that and it's like, oh, it dropped off the map in 2009. So I'm thinking that's ah, in a field somewhere or maybe it got shipped overseas or maybe it's in a junkyard, maybe it got crushed, whatever. Kind of gave up on it. And then we did the intro video last week and I mentioned that in my video. My first car was a Mercedes, 1986 Mercedes 190E um, that was a Awesome car, I loved that thing. And I sold it when I was in high school and I regret selling it. I'm still on the lookout for it, so if you have some way to find it for me, you know, email us. <laughs> and one of the viewers reached out and said, hey, I'd like to help find your car for you. Can you send me the info that you have? Sure, so I sent him the VIN number, sent him all of that stuff. A Couple days later, he sends us an email back and says, hey, I may have, have some information on your car and I found an address and a possible name for the person who has it. Cool. All right, let's see what we can do. And a couple more days go by. He's like, hey, I have a phone number for the guy. I'm going to call him. Cool. Let's call him and see what we can figure <laughs> out. So he ends up calling these numbers he found. And the guy calls him back and says, hey, I still have the car. And I'm like, holy shit. You know, you get that <laughs> drop in your stomach. There's like, there's no way. That's impossible. But he's, there's a caveat. He's like, there's an interesting story behind all of this. So I'm going to let, you know, you guys hash it out. Okay, cool. He sends me the owner's name and phone number and some pictures of the car. And I get the pictures and I'm like, okay, it's actually better than I expected. The paint's all messed up. It's my car, but the paint's faded. And then I get the picture of the engine bay. <laughs> and there's a Cobra engine in this car now. <laughs> and I'm like, what the, what is going on? So I, I ask him, I said, what's the deal with the engine? Oh, well, I bought this car back in 2009 from a dealer, I guess somehow it got into a dealer's hands. I drove it away and the engine blew up on my way home. I took it back to them and they wouldn't help me. And so I took it to a friend's custom shop and they put the 
Cobra motor, it's a five liter Cobra motor. That's all I know. I don't know anything else about it yet. With a manual transmission, I was like, I, I don't know what to think because I'm kind of like, I wanted it to be original, but at the same time, it's kind of cool that somebody modified it and I don't know. At least it's got a legit engine there. Yeah, it's got a legit engine in it, but this car still looks like it's pretty rough. So it's gonna need a ton of work. Guy says, hey, if you want it, make me an offer. I've got all this money in it and I've had some family issues. It's been sitting for years. I don't want it. Make me an offer. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. So I'm waiting on more pictures and I need to figure out how much I want to pay for it. I'm definitely going to buy it. There's no doubt. I don't care how much it costs. That deal better be solidified before this video comes out, right? Yes, it will. It will. More to come because this is an ongoing. If he sees this video. Yeah, I don't think he's going to see it. But Probably not. This is an ongoing thing. So. Yeah, that's kind of where it's at. So I'm super excited. If I get that car back, you're going to see a ton of it because I'm going to make it like new again. And maybe we can go through that Are process. Are you put back in the original engine? I don't know yet. I don't know. I would like to, but at the same time, is it worth doing? Because maybe that engine that's in the car is worth some money. I don't know. I mean, Cobra like, engine, that's yeah. pretty legit. He says it needs a fuel pump and a fuel line is cracked or something, but it'll start right up with some uh, starting fluids. Who knows? Like it could be a total basket case or... Maybe it just needs a few things. I don't know, but I'm curious about the interior. Yeah, he did tell me the interior is nice. Whatever that means. <laughs> I've heard that one before. So we'll just have to see, you know, and we'll keep everybody updated. Also, I'll give a shout out to the guy that helped us. We'll put his info in the comments. Said he'd be willing to help any of the viewers out there. If you want to try to find your old car, send him an email and, and, you know, get set up with him and he'll help you out. He did stuff that I couldn't do. And I've got lots of resources through the dealership and everything. And I couldn't get any info and he somehow found this stuff. So give him an email, send him an email if you're interested in doing something like that. So as you can imagine, this was kind of a bit of a surprise to us. The same guy, the same PI that reached out to Josh has actually helped some of the people that were victims of CNC Motors. So he's just a super nice guy, has done some really cool stuff for the car community. So again, his information is in the description below. Reach out to him and maybe he can hook you up, find a car or whatever, I don't know. If you guys wanna like, share, and subscribe, we do appreciate that, it does support us. And of course, go check out normalguyssupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services for your car. We're gonna be doing a lot of cool car stuff, so you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. It's gonna be sweet. More to come. BMW Mercedes 190E <laughs> coming your way with Cobra power. Hey, that car probably hauls ass if it's got a oh, Cobra dude, engine. Oh, dude, that's a view. I don't. This is sound cool. Too. I don't know which version of Cobra engine. He said it's a five-liter Cobra engine. I don't know. So that's like a. That's a Fox body Cobra engine. It might be. Yeah. I don't know. The SN95 had uh, the 4.6. Yeah. I mean, 300 horsepower in that car, that's probably what it puts out. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. With a manual. That'd be I mean, fun. It'd be pretty fun. A rear wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> See, if it's only if I can just fix it up and do some cosmetics and like get it painted and do that, yeah, that's gonna be badass. I'm curious to see how this whole thing plays out. Yeah, and we're definitely going to Arizona and getting it. Oh yeah, we have to. Point. We have to go film it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. That's, that's road trip time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be out there. Yeah. <laughs>